my talk. Here we go. Uh. Ah, he said he living life as a gringo. Where you question, where you fit, and every time you mingle, they say you do this with not enough that. My rapping is really bad. <laughs> this life as a gringo. Yes, hello and welcome to another episode of Life as a Gringo. I am Drommels, of course. And man, first and foremost, I'm coming off an incredible, incredible weekend. I just got back from Miami. We had iHeartRadio's Fiesta Latina. Uh, shout out to State Farm and the whole Michael Tura podcast team, the whole iHeartRadio team had me out there um, doing some incredible interviews with different artists, some of the fellow Michael Tura podcast family. Just an amazing time. I'm still like, reeling from it right now and it has me in a a very like reflective place right now and i'm going to share with you a recent conversation that we did with the just be social club because it felt it felt really appropriate to what we've been talking about right so in this episode we kind of touch on a lot of different things but i think at its core we're talking a bit about the long and and sort of lonely road that it can be when you are trying to heal yourself, when you are trying to change your life, when you are trying to achieve your goals and you are just, you know, striving for something more in your life, it can be incredibly lonely and alienating, right? And as I was was out there in Miami and, you know, kind of now coming back and and just reflecting on how far we've come and how amazing the journey has been, I'm reminded of some of those darker moments on my journey in my career in my personal life, you know, of, of feeling incredibly alone, all the sacrifices that I had to make to get to where I am right now, um, to make something like this previous weekend happen. And, you know, it wasn't easy. There were so many times I wanted to give up. But, you know, when you have these sort of full circle moments like this one, which, you know, this weekend was was full circle for so many different, you know, um, for so many different reasons, you know, I mean, the, the main thing I'll, I'll kind of, you know, say that is the easiest way to sum it up is, you know, when I first started, you know, getting into radio, I had met a lot of radio people through just DJing in clubs, right? And, uh, you know, and I first started out before I was even working at the radio station. And even when I was, you know, I was doing a very like low level job. I would watch as like my friends who were in radio, I'd watch as they got to do all these amazing opportunities and travel. And I would sometimes go to the events with them and kind of watch behind the scenes as they got to live out their dream essentially right interviewing artists and getting to have you know conversations with with peers and and just you know doing what they love doing right and i was you know was always envious not in in like a a hating type of way but just you know wanting that to be me one day and striving for that to be me one day and now that it's here and i am doing things like that um, i'm just incredibly honored and humbled by it and so proud of myself for walking the road that i did you know, even if it was incredibly lonely and and hard at times, I'm just so damn proud of, of you know, 20 something year old me who really stuck it out to, to make sure that, you know, eventually we got to live out our dreams. So um, I think this conversation we're, uh, you know, going to listen to here from the Just Be Social Club, I think is right on par with that. We talk about community. We talk about the lonely road. We talk about wanting to put yourself out there amongst like minded people, how I still struggle with that. We're also going to hear from from one of the the members of the community who um, is expressing a bit of frustration in not feeling like the change that they've been hoping for is happening quick enough. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll go down that road. And I think it's a really beautiful conversation um, that I was a part of. But also, I think anybody that hears it, you know, you're going to be able to relate to it and, and see part of yourself within that as well. So I wanted to share that conversation with you on today's show. So we'll start out with... Uh, kind of me talking a bit about community, and then we'll get into some of the questions that got us diving down um, this road of, of people feeling frustrated that they're not getting the change they want, you know, fast enough, essentially, right? And we've all been there before. So uh, we'll hop into that, this conversation from a recent Just Be Social Club. The next one in this four pillars that we talk about here with uh with conscious living is community you know and that's so much of what we're doing here is bringing people together and and giving them a a common cause where we're all trying to make ourselves better we're all bouncing ideas off each other you know we're all uh participating in 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 some sort of way in a, a common goal right and i think that that's something that when you 
think about even, you know, like older societies and, and the idea of tribes and all these things. It's just something I think innately grain, ingrained in our DNA that we as human beings want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves, right? And, you know, even with community in terms of like the people that you're around, I think it's also how are you participating as an active member of your community? You know, I think for me, what has been so incredibly rewarding about all that we do and, and doing the podcast and all these things is it feels like I'm serving something bigger than myself, right? Where a lot of my older endeavors, be it in radio or be it DJing and producing music and all these things, you know, they were 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 self self serving, really, right? And not that I didn't try to find ways to give them a deeper meaning, right? I would tell myself as a DJ, well. People have had a crazy hard week. I'm providing them with entertainment. They get to dance, laugh, have fun with their friends, that kind of thing. And I think there is some, there's some truth in that. But for me, it was like I always wanted to dig deeper. I needed something more. And that's why what I get to do now is so incredibly rewarding. And I feel like it's been uh, a really big kind of shift in, in my life, you know, in my own happiness and, and fulfillment. And it's because every time I do something, um, I'm getting to not only serve, you know, my own purpose where I enjoy performing, if you will, or or um, speaking and, and 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 doing, you know, entertaining in some sort of way. But at the same time, I also get to know that in doing that, I am hopefully helping people better themselves or be seen, right, or or be a part of something, um, and and contributing to their life in a positive way in some sort of fashion, right. So that's sort of the the idea, I think, of, of community, how I've been kind of implementing it. And I, I think also, you know, there are, I, I think, who was it? Antonio, I think I was talking to about this, but, um, you know, him talking about not knowing a lot of creatives, right? Not knowing people who share that similar interest to him. And that's something that I went through a lot growing up, you know, where I felt like I was in, you know, I was in like a small town um, in, in Jersey, suburbia, and, you know, nobody was this creative type. Nobody was really striving for something bigger than what they already knew. You know, nobody was taking risks. Nobody was going out and, and trying to, um, explore new ideas, new ways of doing things, you know, and it felt really, you know, I felt really alienated for a long time. And I would kind of like through the internet back in the day, like MySpace and things like that, like, that was my outlet to try and feel like I was a part of, of something more, you know, like I would always be trying to make friends with people on the internet, message boards and shit like that. Um, and then obviously social media became an extension of that. But, you know, it's an incredibly lonely journey when you feel like you're the only one who is is operating on that that same wavelength, right? And it's still something I struggle with to this day now, um, back in suburbia, you know, and much of my life and creative friends are are still in New York or the New York area. And I'm kind of detached from that, right? And I'm trying to, um, you know, facilitate new relationships, new community in the area. And it's tough to meet people as an adult, you know, and it's definitely something I'm missing of just being around that energy of, of people who are dreaming of, of doing things and just constantly coming up with ideas in my life. And I reflect on that a lot. And, and definitely something I'm trying to kind of strive for and to, to build up, you know, and I think even, you know, having talked to some of you guys, you know, separately and, and um, you know, I know you and I have, have talked about, you know, you wanted to, to build your own business and all these things, you know, I think it's, it's great when you have somebody that believes not only in you, but also doesn't think your idea is all that crazy, right? That you can like, when you're having those moments of doubt, when you're, second guessing yourself a little bit that you can bounce ideas off that person and they get it right and they they get it beyond just wanting to be supportive but they understand it genuinely from the standpoint of having been somebody who is a creative or somebody who wanted to start their own business or go out on their own right and take a risk and i think there is is something so incredibly powerful about that because i think for many of us you know, we really just kind of need that those bumpers. And I use this analogy a lot when it comes to like bowling, right? Like the child bumpers that kind of keep the ball in the lane. And I think oftentimes that's what good community can provide for you, you know, is is somebody who's going to sort of help keep you uh, on your on your track and on your path and keep you inspired, you know, 
and and moving on with the the actions and all that you're you're striving to do you know so um i think this is something i want to make everybody sort of keenly aware of and and also you know challenge you to seek out community wherever you can you know um i think that things like this are are beautiful we have going on with the the just be social club and and the ability to connect virtually and and to to be able to share things with one another via the social media group and all that stuff on on Instagram but i also think there has to be this real world element and that's going to be part of the homework um that we we talk about today and and it's actually going to be something i'm i'm going to join in on the the challenge as well um of of trying to to find that community so we'll talk a bit deeper um about about that you know now speaking of of kind of the collective us we were talking about about community you know and and you know that's obviously the basis of of what just be is and all these things is you have people bouncing ideas off each other and and exploring different things and um having insights and and sharing ideas and and that's a beautiful thing i know for me i always feel energized after one of these conversations you know um so i think i want to explore community even deeper because i think that there's other other things that we can sort of be uh attaching ourselves to right like i think this scratches the surface you know as it stands right now and i think if you're feeling the power of just something like this imagine if you had it in other aspects of your life or it was something you were um you know consistently a a part of in person or whatever it might be right so i think that my my homework that i'm i'm trying to get to here is i think exploring a community that you actually that you want to be a part of right and obviously you know everybody here has joined here they're giving their time to it we know that this is something we all want to be a part of but i want to explore it even deeper you know and and like i had started off talking about i'm going to participate in this homework as well like i'm you know no longer living in the city you know where i had my creative hub of people you know i am uh, uh in the in the suburbs you know and and i'm not around fellow creatives it's it's a very kind of like uh you know normal suburban town right so i'm i'm kind of feel like i'm by myself on an island at times right and there's not much going on in my area i always have to drive back into the city if i want to go do something or be a part of something so one of my challenges that i i set out for myself is how do i try to make myself a part of the local community but find people who are like minded in some sort of way right maybe i just go to an event i go to an, i don't know an open mic at the local coffee shop just to hang out and maybe i meet some creative people whatever the hell it might be a book reading i don't know what the fuck what what i don't know how adults meet people i'm going to have to look into this to be honest with you but um i'm just going to explore what the fuck is going on in my local area and, and just throw myself into it right and that's one of the things i want to to do and then i think even beyond that if there's not like a local scene that you're trying to be a part of right or or you're not trying to sort of uh build any sort of network um is what about how how can you be somebody who contributes something to your community right be it volunteering somewhere being a part of of some sort of solution based you know um company or or thing that is going on locally around you where can you lend yourself to be a part of it right because i think community obviously is like the people we interact with and and being a part of something but to me also i think about it uh as well as like our relationship as a citizen of the world itself right and you know i think we've been groomed as a society to be incredibly selfish incredibly inundated in our own bubbles and sort of like operating within our own world and just what's best for us type of thing you know because we're basically just surviving that's the way it's been set up right and i think when we talk about the idea of conscious living it's not only being aware of yourself and what's best for you and and your loved ones but but also you know what sort of mark or effect am i having on the community around me as a whole the the world as a whole right what am i doing to contribute to it in a positive way at the end of the day right so i want you know the the homework is is ha- figure out something you want to be a part of is it a group of people is it volunteering somewhere something that sort of adds that extra fulfillment to your life that you're participating in something bigger than just yourself right so that's just going to require doing some research i guess locally and whatever it might be even if it's just walking dogs at a local dog shelter right just anything to like get yourself into something i think also 
pushing ourselves out of our comfort zones is a part of that, right? Like it's flexing that muscle of, of talking to new people and trying something new and different and uncomfortable. And, and just, again, you know, you're adding something of value to the, the world around you, even in a small way, right? And I think there's something beautiful and incredibly fulfilling about that. And who knows, that might lead to meeting people, you know, that are like-minded and whatever it might be. But just, but just again, throwing yourself into something, whatever it might be, um, that's kind of your, your challenge for, for this week, you know, figure out something that's going on around you that you want to be a part of and, and how can you sort of infiltrate that and, and be a part of it in some sort of way. So that is the, the homework for uh, this, this month, I should say, I think I was saying this week. All right, so we're now going to get into some questions from the Just Be Social Club, uh, kind of more of a back and forth conversation. We'll do that for our Ask a Gringo segment. Ask a Gringo. Uh, I have a question. Any any questions or any comments, uh, anything anybody wanted to touch on before we, we hop off as we get to the end of the, the time here? Um. Yeah, I just wanted to. Yeah. I don't know how this is going to come off, but like when I was younger, I, yeah. I had a desire, right, to help and to change and to make an impact. Um, but now that I'm older, I don't know if it's my lifestyle, right, or I don't know if I'm doing so good that I just, I, I feel like, like there was a part of me when I was younger that wanted that so bad, but now that I'm older, I, I, I don't know if this is going to sound bad, right? It might sound bad, but I'm going to say how, how sure. I think it. Like, I don't have that desire to make a change or to make an impact or, or, um, and I, and I, and, and I don't have that desire, but something in me is like, that doesn't feel right. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. like you, do you like not want to help? Do you not want to change? Cause like, I, I've always, when I was younger, right. I wanted to help people get fit and healthy and I wanted to help right. teens like deal with like, you know, daddy issues because I had a bunch of daddy issues growing up, right? And I'm like, I want to do all these things. But then I started doing a lot of healing to where I'm at a point where I'm like, I don't, I'm good. I don't care. And I'm like, something about that doesn't sit right. And I don't know how to like switch that to like, I should care, right? Because I, I should want everybody to be okay. And I should want, like I do, but not to the point where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you have any advice on regards to that because like I know that like Brenda for example joined this you know she's working for the district now and she has this goal of like helping the community and like being involved and helping youth and stuff and I'm like that's great that's wonderful that's awesome but but I don't it's it's kind of bad for me to say this but I don't care about anything outside of my home and I something about that just feels wrong <laughs> I don't know <laughs> no I mean listen I, I think I, I I never would shame anybody for expressing an honest thought, right? And and it's it's your truth right now. It doesn't make you a bad person. I think it's also conditioning of like life, right? Because that's sort of what we've been told. Like we're all in like survival mode constantly. That's literally like the name of the game, right? And we are brought up with this idea and we don't live in a society that like rewards people for helping others necessarily, right? Because it's like, who are, the, like who are the most broke, you know, people are like the nonprofit companies and things. And obviously there's like ones who make, you know, you can make a profit with it. But the stereotype is if you have a nonprofit or you like as a lawyer, let's say it might be an easier example. If you are a lawyer, you want to make money, you go into corporate law where you're just serving the purpose of making money. Right. You want to be a broke lawyer. You go into something like immigration law. Right. And it's like this idea that if you want to do good, that's, that means that you're sacrificing your own success and well-being by doing it, right? So it's like, I think we all d can develop a tough sort of outside skin of like, I if I go and do something else, it might take away from me helping myself out, right? And, and I think that we begin to get ingrained in that mindset, and that's kind of the American way, right? Um, and, and it causes us to sort of like, feel like, uh, you know, sorry, I've got my own shit going on. I don't have time to deal with yours type of thing. Right. But it's the same. It's it's the same feeling about people who hate immigrants. Right. Who don't have any empathy whatsoever, where they're just like, listen, I'm struggling working my job nine to five, check to check. Why? Why should I care about somebody else coming to my country for an opportunity? Right. I have my own shit to worry about. I can't care about them and they might make it harder for me. So I don't want you know what I'm saying. And and obviously it's like, you know, two things could be true you could be 
wanting what's best for you, but also wanting what's best for somebody else, right? But again, we can become really bitter to life when we're just dealing with so much shit and having to protect ourselves, right? And and also, you know, obviously, I, I don't know you well enough, but I can say for a lot of my own things where it's like, there weren't a lot of people trying to give me a helping hand along the way. So I can be very bitter towards other people, right? If I if, if I allow myself to, if I'm not cognizant of it, um, you know, I, I can easily kind of allow that to to become this tougher outer layer that I have where it's like, listen, nobody really helped me get to where I am today. Like you go figure out your own shit type of thing, you know? Um, but But what I think I've recognized at the end of the day, and even if it doesn't feel that way, right now for you when you think about it i think the more that i've given the more i've received right and even if you have to think about it in a in a quote unquote selfish manner like that right that you giving is actually going to open more doors for you in some sort of way right so it's like you know more the more i i give my time to people who are connecting with my message you know like like let's look at Let's look at this like the most fucking Donald Trump narcissistic business person way of of looking at the world, right? It's like, okay, if I am a creator and I have people watching the things that I'm doing, they're connecting with it. Um, when they reach out to me, ask me for advice in the coldest way possible, if I'm just looking at it from a financial standpoint, me giving them that advice is going to make them a bigger fan. Then they're going to support me and my financial efforts, right? And and there's a part of that that's true. And it's not the reason why I'm I'm doing things, but it's also, you know, I think it's like the I, idea that the giving is actually what's always going to yield the return, right? Like that. So me, me giving that person my time is not only going to help them, but then it's also going to yield the results of like helping me as well, right? And I think that's sort of the the beauty of the giving type of thing, right? Where I think oftentimes like have you ever given a gift and it felt really good like the person's reaction just made you feel good right mm -hmm. so it's almost like that was worth more than the 40 dollars that you spent right especially if you ever given like a little kid like a pack of pokemon cards and like that 4.99 like and they're just so fucking souped about it like that felt good right to see them excited and to and to do that type of thing right so you know it's like i i, I really do think that the more you give obviously responsibly because we're just talking about money but the more you give the more life is just gonna gonna repay you tenfold, right? And I think if that's how you, what I'm getting at is if you have to trick yourself into doing it through a, a more selfish lens, just have have that lens be adapted, right? So like the more that you are giving back to something, like good karma is probably gonna come your way in a better way, right? Or or you're gonna make a friend that might give you a connection to you know opening your business or something like that, right? Like that's how you have to if you have to trick yourself into looking at it from that manner until it becomes like you're just so ingratiated in it, right? And I think the first steps is just tricking yourself into just doing it. And then eventually the natural goodness of it all, I think will wash over you. But um, I think, I think, you know, um, it's, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So I, I think I can tell you exactly where my mindset changed, right? Um, yeah. When I was younger, I, I was always the one people would come to for advice and I would give people advice and I would help people out and yada, yada, yada. And then one time during my healing, um, I was listening to an audio from Esther Perel and she was talking to a, a couple, right? And she was asking the girl, she was like, do you want to help because you genuinely want to help them succeed or you want to help because you want to say you did that? Right. Like, right. And I was like, oh, I, I don't know if I was helping people from the wrong approach because I was like, Oh, when people thank me, I'm not, I, I, I felt like I wasn't doing it because I'm glad you're, you're doing better, but I'm like, Oh, I did that. Right. And right. I feel like that encouraged me a lot from like wanting to reach out to people because, um, that's when I was like, maybe I have some work to do. Right. Because like, if I'm helping someone and they say, thank you, it's more like, Oh, I did that. Right. And I'm trying right. to like pull away from that. So like the need to help people has literally like, left me because i i don't know why i'm linking right helping people to like it, me being egotistic about it right and and, and i don't know that sounds like validation <laughs> right right i think and, and i share in that a lot as well where 
it is validating to help somebody and then they go on and like have success and you could feel like you're a part of that, right? But I think, I don't think you, like I, there's not, there shouldn't be shame in that though. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I think, because regardless of how you're interpreting it, where you're like internally like taking credit, oh, I did that shit. You still did a good deed at the end of the day, right? Like, so like it doesn't discredit that. You still did do something good. Even if, if uh, to a degree, you're doing it for some sort of validation. Now, I think two things could be true. I think if while helping somebody, you are wanting that validation of helping them, right? That's coming up. Then it's like, it's a two, it's sort of a separate conversation. I don't think it's you being this person that only wants to help people for the sake of, of being able to say you did it. I think it's, you are looking for validation in, in, places that you're not supposed to, right? And then you're attaching the two together, right? And I, I think that's sort of the exploration. I think maybe it's not so much where you should be like feeling guilty or, or telling yourself you're doing it for all the wrong reasons, but instead having awareness around the fact that the need for validation is coming up in that moment. And that's a, a separate exploration from the idea of helping. You get what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And I've worked on my need for validation because I feel like my entire life I was looking for validation. Right. Sure. I've, I've worked on that. And I've had a couple of instances where recently a few of my friends have came back and said, oh, thanks to what you said, yada, yada, yada. I started my own business or, I, you know, I, I worked on selling my first home. Right. Like they come back and you tell me these things. But my approach now is like, oh, no, I didn't do anything like you did that. You right. congratulate yourself. Like, you know, like. And I, I, I don't feel anything like what I used to when I was younger, where I'm like, oh man, I feel I did that. Right. <laughs> because yeah. I, I feel like I can't, I can't celebrate that for as a victory for myself because I'm like, no, I just kind of shared my knowledge and then they did the work. Right. Um, and, and I, I have a lot of people reaching out all the time, but I'm just like, you know, like in my head, I'm like, I, like what you said earlier, I did the work. I figured it out myself. I, I fixed a lot of unhealthy patterns in myself i worked on a lot of daddy issues by myself right yeah. so i'm like i i can sit here and tell you how to live your life or coach you how you live your life which I, i'm not no way means certified to do any of that but i can give you advice right but at the same time i feel like people have their own learning line their learning time frame right i feel like there's a lot of things that i want to say especially to my nieces but i'm like uh what if you're not ready for that information and i'm just wasting my time you know, and and again, I know that's like it's maybe just my ego getting in the way, or maybe me really trying to be like super higher self spiritual, where I'm like, oh, I just let people be. I don't know, and, and I don't know where this is all coming from, but I don't know. I just I think that one of the reasons why I joined this was because I was really trying to look for my purpose, was really trying to start my business, and to be honest with you guys, um, like. I'm still where I started <laughs> yeah. like two months ago. And I, and that doesn't sit right with me because I'm like, what am I missing? What am I, what am I not catching? Right. Or, or like, am I really, am I genuinely doing that good that I really don't need to make any changes? But then again, like something well, about let me, that. Let right? me inter interject. Hey, I, I want I want you to like, let yourself off the hook a little bit. Cause two months is, is literally two months. That ain't, that ain't that long of a time. Right. You, you can't really do much in two months at the end of the day. Right. In, in a, in a real sense, like, you know, you can't bring much to life in a matter of just two months from scratch to two months. Right. So give yourself a little bit of a of a, a break. And then if we want to have if you want to have an accountability conversation with yourself, what have you done differently in the last two months that you that would yield the expectation of different results, if that makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. So like it's 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 one thing to show up, which is the big gigantic first step that most people don't even take right so you're already ahead of the curve but then it's the other thing that once you get the information are you applying it right and and then holding yourself accountable in in that manner right and neither one you should be shaming yourself if the answer is i've applied nothing or i've applied everything right you shouldn't be like over celebrating or shaming whatever the case may be it's really just awareness it's just having a conversation right but it's like if you're reading every self-help book in the world never applying any one of the concepts, of course, like you're just going to be like the world of self-help sucks. I don't get anything from it. Right. Like we can all easily do those things. And, and we're all guilty of that at times. And I think that's where you walk the fine line of you're not beating yourself up, but then you're also being very real with yourself. What, what have I actually tried to implement differently? Right. And, and even getting back to like 
what you talk about your your purpose, like the thing that consistently you mention a lot is the training shit, right? And, and you did it when you weren't making a, an exceptional amount of money off of it, right? So obviously there's an enjoyment there. And I think you might have your blinders on to what you were enjoying about it. I'm sure it made you feel good when you saw your clients getting into better shape, getting healthier or coming in happier, right? With the results that they were getting from the work that you were putting into it, right? I'm sure there was a validation you were getting internally, but at the same time, you felt good because you also watched them leaving the space a better person they were when they came in, right? So you are capable of that and obviously helping in that way is speaking to you, right? So I think being cognizant of of those things and, and sort of letting yourself off the hook a little bit and and maybe not having uh, unrealistic expectations as to what certain things are supposed to look like at the end of the day, right? And it doesn't mean you just start spewing advice at every random person, right? And that like, like, or everybody in your life that you see is fucking up and you're just like, nope, go fix that, right? Because there's, there's a thing about unsolicited advice, right? Where it's just like not helpful uh, if somebody's not actually genuinely looking for that advice. Um, so I think keeping that in mind. But I, I think, you know, You've proven that you're capable of it, and I'm sure by the way you speak about it that there was something that made you feel really good about helping your clients and then getting results out of it and their lifestyle changing. And quite frankly, with something like personal training, you're, you are potentially adding years to somebody's life by helping them eat healthier, by helping them work out on a consistent basis. You know, you, you are making a profound impact. Uh, which you're not going to see, you know, the grand results of it right now. But like those little things are adding to somebody's quality of life on a regular basis, right? And in a big way, in the long run, if they stick with it. Um, so I think being aware of that. And back to that that conversation, though, where you're you're kind of like, okay, it's been two months. What comes up for you when I bring those two things up? Where two months isn't that long, and B, having yourself accountable about what have you actually implemented uh, or or done after in those two months. Um, well, actually, um, I, I'm, I guess I'm not neutral now that I think about it, because the fact that I'm thinking about all these things, like I wasn't thinking about all these things like two months ago, right? Yeah. Um, I'm definitely not neutral. I'm definitely starting to feel like, like a little bit of burn um, in regards to like, I don't need to act now, but I need to act sometime, right? Because eventually, like, I do want to be my, I do want to be a hub of a business, correct? And, and, mm -hmm. and as you were speaking now, I'm realizing like, like I'm adapting to my environment. I adapt to my environment so good. And so I adapt to energy so good that I'm complacent and, and comfortable. Right. And that's the reason why there's that little voice that is telling me like, Hey, listen, like you're just comfortable because you're making money and money, money makes, it means a lot in this world. Right. Sure. Um, but, um, but I, I think that the fact that I'm just aware about, like something's not right. Yeah. <laughs> Which I wasn't aware about like in, before I joined this. Um, but I'm like, I'm just too comfortable and I feel like this is not me, right? But then again, I'm also working on accepting myself for what I am today. Um, which has also been very good, but but I still feel like and you know what it is that maybe I'm just afraid that I'm just approaching this like in a selfish, egotistic way. I think I'm just so afraid of my ego that I'm like, you know like on hold. So, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, is it ego? Is it afraid to express yourself authentically, right? These are all questions you have to ask yourself. Is it, are you afraid? Is it unworthiness? Is it scared of taking up space, right? Is it imposter syndrome? Is it any one of these things? And I, I, I'm glad you just arrived to this also understanding how tremendous just having awareness is, right? Like so many people are literally just walking around pissed off for and they don't have any fucking idea why whatsoever right they're like sad they are miserable they are angry at the world and they can't tell you for what like what the good reason is they can tell you a million and one random little things but they can't actually like give you a real answer as to what's going on with them or they're not even aware of the fact that they're walking around as an asshole 99 percent of the time right and and like even for me because I, so I, I like did a, a personal growth retreat. I went away in the woods for like a fucking week. I spent thousands of dollars on this thing. And I had heard like all these podcasts and these really successful people talking about how it was life changing, all this shit. And I expected it to be this fucking light switch when I got done with it. And it wasn't because nothing really is right. Nothing ever is that 
the growth is little incremental things that you don't really notice, but like people around you might begin to notice or you'll notice it in little moments. And like, I swear what I've made myself so aware of it recently. And I've recognized a profound change where like in the last couple of weeks where I'm, I've been like burnt out. I've been really tired. I've had just have a lot on my plate right now and I'm stretched pretty thin. And then I have the little annoyances of like, you know, your parents are getting older and you have to help them with a bunch of stupid shit. That's like at the worst possible time. And then they have zero communication skills whatsoever. Right. So it's like, they're, it's like, they're just digging at you. You're like trying to keep your cool. Right. And every once in a while I lose my cool. And I'm not proud of that. That's something I want to work on. But I like only lost my cool two out of 10 times. Right. And a that's growth right there. But B it's awareness of the fact that I was stopping myself in the moment from losing my cool. I was taking myself out of the situation before it happened. Now, is that something that you're going to like very obviously see on paper, right? That I like didn't flip out in the moment. No, that's that, because that's like not something that, you know, is the expectation. But like when I think about it, I'm like old me prior to that would have lost his shit at every single one of those opportunities that happened. Right. But this version of me who has worked on himself, who's learning how to slow down and have more awareness and control over what he's thinking and things like that is not losing his shit nearly at half as much as, as he was before. Right. And that's growth. Now, am I a completely different person? Like, you know, light switch again? No, but all of those things add up. And that makes me have a far more positive relationship with my parents. Right. Rather than like us having to have these big blowouts and then pretending like nothing happened the next week. Right. Right. So and we're all just holding out to this resentment. Right. So that's huge in the long run, even though in the short term, it doesn't seem like it. Right. So the fact that your mind is just constantly thinking about this shit now and you're like having these internal struggles and dialogues and you're like, am I am I being egotistical? Am I being selfish? Am I doing this? It doesn't feel like it right now, but you're asking yourself all the right questions. You're actually digging deep right now and like figuring out what the fuck am I feeling? Right. You're like you're not being a zombie who's just clocking and clocking out type of thing. You're actually like exploring what are these emotions and it's going to be really fucking frustrating because you're going to have emotions that you don't know what the fuck to do with them. And you're just trying to make sense of them. Right. And, you, and like, it just doesn't seem like how the fuck am I ever going to make sense of this? But eventually you're asking yourself that question enough. You're aware of it enough. You're going to see something that inspires you that unlocks the answer, or you're going to finally have the right question to ask. Right. And then you're going to get what you've been looking for, or something's just going to click. But it all starts with that awareness around what's actually going on inside of you. Right. So I think recognize that and that is growth in itself and keep digging deeper, like as annoying as it is, just keep having those talks with yourself about like, what the fuck am I actually feeling? Right. Like even just like that conversation of like, this is what's coming up for me when you talk about helping out. I don't feel proud about that reaction, but this is what's coming up for me. Right. Whereas maybe prior to this, you would have just said, eh, it's not for me and been, and not dug any deeper than that. Right. But here you are, the duality of a human being having a conversation with yourself. This is what's coming up for me, but I'm also recognizing this isn't necessarily how I want to be feeling or how I want to look at life, right? So you're having that conversation and in that conversation leads to you having some sort of conclusion that makes you better and grows at the end of the day, if that all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it does. And I think that's what that's what it is that um, I think that I've tried to like abandon my old self. Right. Let me wait. I tried to abandon like my younger self because I was high functioning for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, I was an asshole to some extent. I wasn't intentionally an asshole. I was just like sure. driven for success that I would like have time for no one or nothing. And my priorities were fixed and they were set. But I was like, I was high functioning. I wasn't living. I was just surviving. Right. And I feel like I realized at some point that I didn't want that. I didn't want that. And I feel like I'm, I'm naturally a leader since I can remember it, but I'm so scared and it's probably fear. I feel it in my body right now as we're talking. It's fear of being driven um, and returning to being high function, high functioning because right now I'm maintenance. I'm, I'm doing a lot of maintenance in like my mental health, my emotional health. Right. I, uh, just a lot of good things are happening for me right now that I'm afraid that if I dig deeper into like my real desires, I'm going to jump back to the young, high driven, high functional, broken person that I was because I don't, I don't want to go back to that, you know? And so 
I joined this with the purpose of like, because I know there's more to me, but I don't want to do it the wrong way, if that makes sense. Of course. But, but here's the thing. There is no wrong or right way ever. There just is a choice you make and whatever happens, we deal with it, with it right? That, that's really what, whatever anything is. We make a choice. Sometimes it leads down a, uh, the exact road we hoped for or better. Sometimes it leads us the complete opposite way and we just, we deal with it. Every single, every day we make those choices, right? You, you avoided a particular route to work because you hope you would get you out of traffic and you end up just running into another set of traffic, right? We deal with it. It didn't end our day. We just dealt with it. It was, it was a decision we made. It didn't work out this time for us, right? So I, I think don't get caught up in the perfectionism of it all. But I think also don't forget that you learned that lesson. So that that kid that you're talking about didn't have the lesson of having the lost relationships or lost social life or whatever it is, right? So they they didn't know any better. You know better this time. So you're going to now... You're not going to do it perfectly, right? There might be times you have to check yourself or those around you have to check you, but you're going to be far more cognizant of trying to find that balance between being driven, but also making sure that you maintain your personal relationships because you now have had the experience of losing that to a degree and you recognize the importance of them in your life, right? I want the You're saying something that really resonates heavily with, with me. And I was that driven person. I put my friends in the backseat and I had to just figure out my career, right? Any of my friends back home, I, I, it was just kind of like, I'll see you when I see you type of thing, right? And now at the age I'm at, everybody's getting married, right? And it's a reminder of, I wasn't a great friend where it's like, okay, I'm um, invited to the wedding and all these things, but people that I expected to one day be in my wedding, I'm not a part of their groomsmen party, right? That like, Obviously, it hurts to a degree, but then when you have that real conversation, it's like, well, I guess I just I wasn't that great of a friend over the last few years. So just because we grew up together and we were best friends at one point, friendships require maintenance, right? And I didn't know that at that time, right? I wasn't mature enough to understand that. I was selfish. And and to be completely honest, I had to be selfish, right? That's a sacrifice I had to make. While there are negative aspects of it, I don't regret it but 110 percent do not want it to be my life moving forward right i want to i want to actually have real substantial friendships i want to nurture friendships and relationships in my life um you know be it romantic be it friendships whatever it is right and now that i have to figure out how do i remain very disciplined and driven but also prioritize those relationships that i put on the back burner in the past right how do i try and be the type of friend that I want to be, the type of partner that I want to be while still making my dreams come true, right? How, how does that balance happen? And again, it's because of that experience, I'm now aware of what needs to happen, right? What are the little things that I need to implement in my life, right? It means not working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, right? It means making time for self-care, which is something I didn't do before, right? Again, another lesson that I've learned, right? It means uh, you know, texting my friends and checking in on them. It means planning, you know, one night a week where I'm just going to be social. I'm like to throw myself into the world, right? And 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 see what's going on. And that's, again, things that I never prioritized ever, right? I always put that type of shit in the back burner and was like, nope, I got to focus on work. And that's that. I think I, I say that to let you know you're not alone in that, in that, in this type of situation. And then again, it's a reminder that you've learned that lesson. You've gone through that experience, so you've grown from it. You now have an awareness to something you didn't know before, right? It's like you you have a skill that you developed at that time period. You can now apply to your current life, right? And and that's how you have to look at it. And you don't have to like, you know, it's. I think we oftentimes think we have to like murder the old version of ourselves or something like that, right? And and that's not like the healthy part of healing. Like when you you know, dig deep into like a lot of like the um, wellness retreats and like the shit that I went to. It's like, it's not about erasing the old part of yourself or the other part of yourself. It's literally about how do we make all parts of ourselves coexist together in a healthy manner, right? So that little kid, it still lives inside of you. It's like our inner child, right? That's what they call it. It still exists inside of us. It still needs to be nurtured in a specific way, right? It still needs to be healed. What does that look like as an adult? How do I nurture that part of myself? How do I nurture the other parts of myself, right? Like, 
you have, you're trying to make everything work together in an, in an ecosystem rather than trying to cut off parts of yourself that just is not a feasibly possible but b is, is not going to lead to a fulfilled person right you're literally losing a part of yourself right so that old part of you still has a lot of value it still has something to teach you there's still experiences there right still has things to celebrate it's part of the reason why you are where you are right now so you know you have to celebrate that and you're not shaming yourself you're not you know trying to forget that old person you're learning from it what you can and then you're helping it grow up to a degree right that was like the big graduation that we did in that wellness thing with like making your inner child grow up kind of shit um so like just you know visually thinking about it in this way and you know reminding yourself that you are you've been gifted tools that you didn't have back then right so with those tools, you're now not going to make the same mistakes because you have the tools to not have to do that, right? So don't allow that to be the thing that is 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 slowing you down, right? You you figured out what's important to you, and then now you just have to figure out how do you actually implement that into practice, right? How do, what does that actually look like for you, right? It's like you know hyper successful people like uh, Rob Deerdeck is like somebody I listen to his podcast. I just like the way his mind works. Um, the dude from that show, Robin Big and Ridiculousness. But he runs like a big like venture capitalist like uh, investment thing, and he's has all these crazy you know businesses he's investing in. But he he recognizes at this point in his life balance is important. He has scheduled like date nights with his wife twice a week, right? And they have like like to literally on his calendar, and it's like an hour to talk about uh, our week. We grade each other. They like get real ridiculous with it, right? But like that that's on purpose. It's a system he created because he recognizes he has to maintain that balance with his wife and that communication, right? And then like, even with his crazy schedule, it's carved out in his day that he picks his kids up from school and drops them off every single day, right? So like his schedule, his meetings are all based around the fact that they know from eight to 9 a.m. he's dropping his kids off from two to 3 p.m. he's picking them up from school. Nothing can exist within that time frame, right? But again, it's because he's grown and he's learned from having an unbalanced life that these are the things he has to implement into place in order to, to be the more well-rounded person he wants to be, right? So you can still have all the success be driven, um, but it's now you have the the tools to be a little bit more disciplined in your time and uh, and and nurture those other relationships and, and also the relationship with yourself. Um, if that makes if that all makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's just leveling up is scary, you know. Of course, <laughs> of course. But it, but again, it's like the, there's like a, another quote where it's like all like you we've all been through shit in our lives, every single one of us. Right. And here we are still standing. So it, it's like you, all the tools that got you through the hard shit, you still possess them till this day. And you actually possess even more based upon all you've learned. So it's like, why would now be the time that everything falls apart on you? You know what I'm saying? It's like we're all we're all just like in this mindset of of thinking the worst when literally Every single time we figured out a way to bounce back from it, right? We still have figured out a way to make it through another fucking day and and keep on pushing through, right? So why would this be any different, right? Like it, it is that that's just the mindset you ha- that I've been pushing myself to adapt in those in those scenarios when like you know I get punched in the mouth by by something I was not expecting. It's like all right, I'm gonna feel bad for myself for for a few minutes and then I remind myself. There's there's a solution to this. I've been through a bunch of shit. This is going to be another blip on the radar. Let's just fucking deal with it and move on with our life. You know what I mean? Like that's that's really what you have to have to adapt. And it's, it is incredibly scary. But if it's scaring you, that probably means that it's worth it. Right. Like it's that means it's actually a big goal. Right. That means it's worthy of you if it's scaring you. Right. Like uh, you're married. Right. Yes. I'm I'm assuming at some point in time throughout the process before you actually like walked across the aisle, there were some nerves in there at some point, right? Like the idea of the finality of this being the person that you spend the rest of your life with. Um, no, it was actually before the relationship. <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna date anybody. Like I'm good. I'm I'm straight, and it took a long time for me to allow this guy into my life, and. I finally did. So like marrying him was actually not hard. It was allowing him to be part of my life, which was the hardest part. Mary. And now look, you're married. But now I'm so fulfilled because he's probably the best thing, the best person for me. Like, you know, and and he's great and he's supportive and he's amazing and he makes things easier for me in every step. But uh, definitely allowing him into my life. And if we can relate that to me wanting to grow as a person and grow, start a business, like, 
that whole process feels the same way as when I was trying to allow my husband into my life. Like I didn't right. want to deal with issues and I didn't want, to, I was doing good. I was doing good. I didn't need a partner. Right. Yeah. And it's like, I'm linking the connection now because that's exactly how it feels. There's so much resistance to me doing what I actually want to do, which is start my own business, which is train people, which is coach people. There's so much resistance because I'm good. I'm good. I don't, I don't want to have problems. Right. And right. I think, now that you mentioned that, like, allowing, marrying him wasn't hard. Just allowing him to be part of my life was really hard, you know? Right. So yeah. use that as fuel. You've been here before. You've, you've pushed past that fear and look how it worked out for you, right? Like it, it added something of value to your life, right? So I think mm -hmm. like we, it's very easy to find like excuses like, oh, remember I tried that and I failed? How about we start looking at the things that actually we tried and, and, and succeeded, right? Like let's also push ourselves to like, tip the scale in that favor every once in a while, I think, right? And and remind ourselves of that. So I mean, you know, obviously there there's a lot for you to to be thinking about, but I hope that that was kind of like helpful in some way. And, you know, again, the fact that you're having these conversations with yourself, with us and in, in general, like that's fucking growth right there at the end of the day, right? Like that that really it really is. Like that's just awareness. I, I always try and like and and push this to to anybody we talk to and even in the other group where it's like recognize like the fact that you're having these thoughts is huge most people are literally just fucking bumping their way through life have no idea why the fuck anything is happening the way it is right they're just reliving the same cycle over and over again and they are pointing fingers everywhere because they have no idea why the same shit keeps happening to them or why they keep feeling the same way or it's because they're just not having any sort of awareness to what is actually going on right so you having any awareness having these questions having these sort of existential moments with yourself is the product of somebody who's growing and challenging themselves. So, you know, be proud in, in that. I think that's a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. Man, I hope you enjoyed that excerpt from the Just Be Social Club, which is my wellness brand um, and community that we are, are building. You know, we are, are hosting these group masterminds. We're going to relaunch in the new year. Uh, anybody wants to be a part of it. Um, so be on the lookout for that. I'll be posting on my socials. You can follow at justb.nyc as well to get the latest updates and, and content, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, just, I think, amazing conversations with amazing people and being able to find like-minded individuals to, to you know come across, I think, is rare. So I'm really proud of what we're building over there with the Just Be Social Club. Now, with that said, let's tie everything we talked about today in a neat little bow in a segment we call Conclusion Stew. Time for conclusion soon. Mm. All right, so keeping it short and sweet, I, I think at the end of the day, I love showcasing these conversations. A, because that we can only take but so many people into the club, right? So there's always going to be someone left out of it, unfortunately. But I think um, B, it just allows you to know you're not alone on your journey, right? And I love talking about you know, longing for like-minded individuals, the frustration of, of feeling like the growth isn't happening quick enough, and also the fear of being out of balance and sacrificing personal relationships. You know, I've, I've had that happen. I'm trying to be better at it, you know, at this point in my life. But these are, are, are common things that all of us as human beings struggle with, right? We're all going to make mistakes along the way. We're not going to be perfect on our journeys. And we just have to have forgiveness for ourselves. And, and then you know, the discipline to try better next time, right? It's all that we can do at the end of the day, right? We can't strive for perfection because it just doesn't exist, right? So um, I think I love showcasing these sort of conversations that are not just me, but you can hear other people, you know, talking about feeling similar ways that I'm sure we all kind of are, right? Or the same kind of struggles that we're all going back and forth with. And I just use these conversations as a reminder to let you know that you are not alone on your journey. I'm right here with you. There are so many other people um, on this journey as well, just trying to figure this thing called life out. And uh, we're all just doing our best. So cut yourself some slack. Um, and if you're going through one of those difficult times, those rockier roads in your story, in your journey, just you know, um, have the patience and the faith to know that if you stick it out, it will work out at some point, right? I feel like I'm living proof of that. Um, I've had so many dark periods, so many tumultuous roads. I mean, even recently, you know, and it really feels like, you know, in this last month, it's like all the seeds that I've been planting um, are finally beginning to grow. And, and it's like, you know, clear skies ahead. Right. Um, so 
I still go through these ups and downs. I think it's a, a part of life. It's especially a part of, you know, when you're going against the norm, against the grain, you're going to meet a lot of obstacles along the way. So just embrace it as a part of the journey um, and have the faith that it's all going to work out some way, somehow, right? As it always does. And with that said, thank y'all so much for tuning into today's show. I will catch you on Thursday for our Thursday Trends episode. So then, stay safe and we'll talk soon. Peace.